the year is 1993, and Sakurai is already working on the next mainline console release for the Kirby franchise. No spin-off, no dilly-dallying, the next biggest Kirby game to date was on the horizon. There were two goals that Sakurai had in mind when designing this new Kirby game. He wanted it to be an omnibus format, meaning that it consists of many mini-stories instead of one overarching story as well as include two players simultaneously playing the game together on one screen. The second idea was actually not Sakurai's. It was a request straight from Shigeru Miyamoto himself. He wanted to try and implement a simultaneous multiplayer system into the Super Mario Bros. games, but felt that those games were too fast to handle such a multiplayer experience without it being unfair for one of the players. Thus, deeming Kirby a slower game than Mario, gave Sakurai the task to implement it within the game. Sakurai was determined to do so and ended up creating a way to make sure both players are on screen the whole time by making the player about to go off screen warp to the other player. Miyamoto would end up using this form of simultaneous co-op in New Super Mario Bros. Wii. The reason why the game is split up into multiple segments instead of one really long cohesive story is because Sakurai was getting annoyed at the overly long stories that popular RPGs were employing at the time. He wanted Kirby to have a nice, self-contained, bite-sized adventures so that the player doesn't get bored of the game after a while. That is how Kirby Superstar was born. We're gonna do this a lot like we did the last video, where I will be reviewing each individual game rather than the game overall. Is this truly the best Kirby game ever made, or is it an overrated mess? Let's find out. Spring Breeze is literally just Kirby's Dream Land remade on the Super Nintendo with some stuff taken out, mind you. For example, there is no Kabula, Float Islands and Castle Lolo are combined into one level, and there is a copy ability. Finishing this mode is the same as completing this mode, just defeat King Dedede and you're done with Spring Breeze. If you love Kirby's Dream Land, you'll love Spring Breeze. I don't really have to explain the story and gameplay of this game because if you've seen my video on Kirby's Dream Land, you know how I feel about Spring Breeze. Spring Breeze gets an A. Dynablade plays pretty much the same as Spring Breeze. You beat the stage, inhale enemies to copy their abilities, and defeat Dynablade at the end. The story of Dynablade is that Kirby is just hanging out on Popstar when a giant bird named Dynablade starts destroying all of the crops in Dreamland. Kirby sets off in an adventure to stop her. This is the first real game of Kirby Superstar, and it is honestly a really great start. To complete Dynablade, you must find the two secret exits that lead to the secret trial rooms, and then defeat Dynablade at the end of the game. This game is unique in that Dynablade is the only boss in the entire game. When you defeat Dynablade, Kirby finds out she was only trying to feed her chicks, to which Kirby moves them under Wispy and feeds them his apples. Kirby and Dynablade understand each other, and Dynablade leaves along with her babies. As far as Kirby games go, Dynablade is very good, but unfortunately, compared to the other games in this collection, it is one of the more forgettable games in Kirby Superstar. Dynablade gets an A. Ever wanted to play the closest thing to a Kirby Metroidvania to date? Welcome to the Great Cave Offensive. One day, Kirby was taking a walk when he accidentally fell into a giant expansive cave. Kirby must find his way out while collecting as many treasures as he can. This is one of two of the games in Kirby Superstar where there is actually a completion requirement. Throughout the Great Cave Offensive, there are 60 treasures that Kirby can find. In order to complete the game, you must get all 60 treasures and defeat all four bosses in the cave. This is easily the longest game in the collection, and honestly, it definitely feels like it. This is the game that I dread completing the most whenever I do a 100% Kirby Superstar run. As fun as this game mode is, there's just so many frustrating challenges that go along with finding all of the treasures in the cave. It is cool to see the treasures, however, as some are Easter eggs to other Nintendo franchises. There's Koopa shells and screw attacks and even Captain Falcon's helmet. This one is definitely my least favorite in the whole collection, but that's only because the rest of the game in this collection makes this one pale in comparison. The Great Cave Offensive gets a B+. <laughs> G 
Gourmet Race is a super short game. The plot is that Kirby travels his way up Gourmet World, a mountain that is said to have a great amount of food, and when Kirby gets to the top, however, King Dedede is up there waiting for him and challenges him to a gourmet race. Kirby and King Dedede must race through the three courses to both win the race and eat more food than the other. The character with the lowest time and the highest score will be named the winner. This game is just three stages long and you will probably be able to beat it in a little over five minutes. Though it is so short, it's still super duper fun to play. Kirby's double speed makes the game super fast paced and makes you require more skill to get through the levels flawlessly. I can see this game being a speedrunner's paradise. Also, you cannot argue with that amazing music. Gourmet Race gets an A. Ever question how action-packed Kirby can be? Look no further than Revenge of Meta Knight for your fix. This is the reason that Meta Knight is my favorite character in the entire Kirby franchise. Sick of Dreamland's lazy lifestyle, Meta Knight, a rogue Waddle Dee, an Axe Knight, and newcomer Captain Vol decide to launch a giant warship called the Halberd and take over Dreamland. Kirby, of course, must stop Meta Knight and destroy the Halberd. The gimmick of this game is that every stage has a time limit. This is honestly the highlight of the game for me. Every single song, every single boss fight, every single cutscene just has this weight to it. Kirby just coming in and fucking up the entire halberd in a matter of minutes is honestly so cool, so good, and this is the game I go back to the most. Nothing gets me more pumped than the Revenge of Meta Knight theme that is definitely way better here than it is in Smash Bros. Even the escape off the halberd at the end, though short, is so tense with one of the most intense video game songs in history. Also, that Meta Knight fight, pure gold. Revenge of Meta Knight is the best game in this collection. Nay, one of the best Kirby games, period. Revenge of Meta Knight gets a very, very deserving A+. Milky Way Wishes is the de facto finale of Kirby Superstar's collection of stories. The Sun and the Moon start fighting above Popstar, making day and night come and go rapidly. Kirby gets approached by another denizen of Dreamland, Marks, and is told that to be able to stop their fighting, he must gather the star power from all of the planets in the solar system and then make a wish on Nova, a comet that grants wishes when powered on. After gathering all of the star power, Kirby flies on up to Nova to make his wish, but gets interrupted by Marks, who concocted this whole scheme in the first place so that he may wish to be the ruler of Popstar transforming him into a monster. Fortunately, the power of the stars turn into a spaceship that Kirby rides inside of Nova in order to destroy it to stop Marx's wish from becoming a reality. After destroying Nova from the inside, Marx decides to fight Kirby himself on the same moon that Kirby fought Nightmare on. After defeating Marx, everything goes back to normal, the sun and moon make up, and Kirby goes to bed. The gimmick of Milky Way Wishes is the Copy Essence system, Instead of copying abilities by inhaling enemies, you must find the copy essences around that level in the game in order to use that copy ability. The cool thing about it is that once you find a copy essence, you can use that copy ability whenever you want. The completion requirement for this game is to obtain all of the copy essences and defeat marks. This game is also really awesome. I love the copy essence system and marks is one of the best villains in Kirby history. Just an agent of chaos. Milky Way Wishes gets an A+. Didn't think I was going to cover the mini mini games, did ya? Megaton Punch is a game where you must punch the ground as hard as you can. First, you fill up the meter, then center your aim, then time the swinging pendulum, and boom, you crack the planet. It's a simple enough mini game that'll entertain you for about one or two playthroughs. Megaton Punch gets a B+. Samurai Kirby is a game that is all about reaction time. This game is a Kirby tradition at this point. You stand in front of your opponent and wait for the exclamation mark to appear on screen. At this point, you must press the A button as quickly as possible and hope your opponent doesn't get to you first. I used to be addicted to this game as a kid and even got my reaction time down to 13, to which my current record of 18 pales in comparison. Samurai Kirby gets an A+.
the final game in the collection, the arena. This game is hard. You must defeat all of the bosses in the game, only being able to refill your health five times throughout the entire boss rush. If you want some tips on how to beat this mode, number one, get hammer and keep it. Hammer is the strongest weapon in the game and that uppercut deals crazy damage. Number two, try to use a Maxim Tomato once every five fights. If you can, save a Maxim Tomato for right before Mark since he is very erratic. You should expect to take a lot of damage. Another tricky fight is Meta Knight, but the hammer does make short work of him and his stupid RNG ass. Once you defeat Marks at the end, you win the arena and have officially 100%ed Kirby Superstar. The arena is a fun challenge that is honestly really easy to learn how to get past. The arena gets an A. Kirby Superstar is, in my opinion, the greatest Kirby game to date. Though the games within the collection are very short, except for the Great Cave Offensive, they are jam-packed full of content and the gimmicks of each game make every game feel unique and provides interesting twists on the Kirby formula. The music in this game is the best Kirby has ever been and it definitely shows since songs from this game in particular will go on to be remixed throughout the franchise. Having so many good and concise stories in this game also has the added benefit of making Dreamland and Planet Popstar's world seem so full. Think about how much we got in this game. Dynablade, The Great Caves, Meta Knight's true character, Marx, Nova. This is one of the most influential Kirby games to ever come out in the franchise, and I cannot wait to get to Kirby Superstar Ultra. You know, all the way in May. Completing this game is not annoying at all, and honestly, I'd recommend it. The only slightly annoying part of completing this game is the Great Cave Offensive, but even then, it's just good fun finding and seeing all of these treasures. Kirby Superstar is one of the greatest games of all time, so it should be no surprise that Kirby Superstar gets an overall grade of an A+. Thank you everyone so much for watching this video, and I hope you guys enjoy the new format of the retrospectives. If you like what you see, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. All the social media are in the description below, so check them out as well. We also got merch in the description. Next week, we'll be talking about the next Kirby game in the lineup, Kirby Star Stacker. But if you're too impatient to wait a week, you can become a channel member and watch it right now. I'm Bottles, and I bid you, my well-esteemed guests, adieu.